Now, you guys all know I'm a Michael Jackson fan. Mega into Michael Jackson. But we all know in the MJ community that Michael was a very magnificent singer-songwriter. He had wrote hits such as Don't Stop Till You Get Enough, Billie Jean, Bad, The Way You Make Me Feel, The Girl Is Mine, Wanna Be Starting Something, Earth Song, They Don't Care About Us, all of them. And pretty much throughout his whole solo discography, um, besides from the Jackson 5 stuff, Michael either written the songs himself or he had co-written songs himself if you look through his discography from off the wall onward but what a lot of Michael Jackson fans do not really talk about is Michael's Jackson 5 days and a lot of I have to say so myself I was introduced to Michael Jackson before I knew who Michael Jackson was through the Jackson 5 but what if I told a lot of people consider that Don't Stop Till You Get Enough was Michael's first written song or Shake a Body during his Jackson days. However, what about we go back in time to 1976? Because this is where we're going to find Michael's actual first written song that he wrote and published and recorded for an album. For Epic Records, mind you. And he was only about 18 at the time. I'm Lollipop Lloyd Warren FLE here today, and this is Lollipop Discusses. So, before I talk about the first song that Michael ever wrote and released, let me talk about a bit of the decline of the Jackson 5 at Motown Records and the rebuilding of the Jacksons at Epic Records. So by 1972, despite Michael and Jermaine having success as solo artists, their group, the Jackson 5, was not doing so hot. They were plummeting in the charts, they were on the decline, most of the songs weren't cracking the top 10. The corporation who had wrote and produced most of the songs had split in 1973 and with the disco craze, they did have one hit called Dancing Machine, which did crack the top 10 since Sugar Daddy nearly three years late before. And despite that, and despite all the non-success, the uh, not successful, the not as successfulness of the follow-ups, Joe Jackson, the patriarch of the Jackson family, had grew tired of Motown, um, began to prove, um, basically they, he'd, began producing a nightclub act with the family starting in Vegas and then expanding to other states and by 1973 the Jacksons had opted out of recording any more music for Motown and the citing was creative control creative control and royalties and this was after learning they were only earning about 2.8 percent of the royalties from Motown Usually you would get more than this as an artist. The Jacksons announced that they were departing in, um, in a press conference in Manhattan. Joe Jackson began negotiations with other record companies and they settled with Epic Records, which had offered the royalty rate of 20% per record. And he signed with the company in June of 1975. And Motown was pretty pissed about this. They were still, the Jackson 5 were still under contract to Motown until March of 1976. So this was nine months before that contract was set to expire. And Motown sued them for breach of contract. But then they acquiesced and allowed the group to record at Epic Records. But they had to change their name because the Jackson 5 name is owned by Motown. You know, the dotted line in the contract that happened with the Supremes as well so the brothers renamed themselves as the Jacksons and absent from the deal was Jermaine he had married ba Hazel Gordy the daughter of Barry Gordy in uh, during the 70s and Randy the youngest son of the Jacksons replaced him 
so by the time 1976 came around, they had their new variety show and they released their self-titled CBS debut under the Phil Philadelphia International subsidiary. And it featured Enjoy Yourself and Show You the Way to Go. And it went gold, but failed to generate the sales of the brothers <laughs> for the brothers while they enjoyed the success at Motown. Um, going Places fizzled, and then we had hits like Destiny, which featured Chick a Body, Trine, which featured Can You Feel It and Lovely Ones, and they released a live album. Then they did Victory, but again, during the late 70s and 80s, Michael Jackson was growing. He released Off the Wall in 1979 and starred in The Wiz in 1978. That's where he met uh, Quincy Jones. 1982, he releases Thriller, and that becomes a major success. The brothers reunite at Motown 25. They did Victory. They went on tour together. But with Victory, there was a lot of drama about that, where um, a lot of disputes, a lot of cussing, a lot of tensions between the brothers, and this was their last tour together. Michael would continue to be successful after this. Bad, dangerous, history, invincible. He continued to be successful despite with all the controversy surrounding him and then he would pass away in, in 2009 after announcing his comeback tour for this is it so let's backtrack to 1976 the brothers released their self-titled album called the jacksons a self-titled album under the um under epic records for the um philadelphia international records subsidiary as a joint venture now we know the backstory behind it, we know it went gold, but this is the album where you find Michael's first song that he ever wrote. And that song is called Blues Away. And you know what, let me give you a bit of an excerpt, a bit of a clip of the hook of the song itself. And I'll come back with my own interpretation of the song itself. <laughs> You can't take my blues away No matter what you say, what you say For a song written by an 18-year-old Michael Jackson and performed by an 18-year-old Michael Jackson, it's pretty damn good and pretty much underrated with all his other compared to his other solo stuff like Billie Jean and The Lady in My Life or even Can't Help It or even I Just Can't Stop Loving You, for example. But the song is pretty much a ballad here. It basically talks, the whole synopsis, in my opinion, is about um, Michael pretty much getting over a breakup and then he goes he actually starts another tries to start another relationship but no matter what she can do she cannot shall we say take his blues away as in like after the breakup like there's no changing that no matter what she would say to make him forget about it he can't for really forget about it but the whole thing about it is, the whole sound of it is pretty freaking good, especially during the outro with the harmonization points of I got the power, um, cause I got this feeling in the outro is pretty amazing here, just to say here. And in a sense, it's very smooth. It's a smooth 70s uh, disco soul pop song as you would say, because this is the mid 70s we're talking about, mid to late 70s. This was years before I was born. And I recently discovered this song in around August or September of this year. Um, let me tell you, let me show you how I discovered it. <laughs> yes, I found out this song's existence through an American scheme. Now, I'm not going to get into my opinion about him because I did it three times, actually four times, no, actually five times on my channel, and we're not going to talk about my feelings here, but basically, take it as you will, he did a video on Blues Away, and basically he talks about how it compares 
Michael's experience with Diana Ross and thus Blues Away references Lady Sings the Blues, which Diana Ross first starred in. That was her first film role. And basically it talks about how um, no matter if he like keeps trying to like, no matter what Diana would do, she can't take it away from him in accordance to the theory. But I don't see it as such. I see it more as a ballad as Michael had just gotten over a breakup and he is dating someone new but the bad news is she can't take his blues away. So really that is my analysis of my feelings on the song. Here's my final thoughts on the song. Blues Away is a pretty damn underrated song if you ask me and Michael's first venture into songwriting is amazing for this for his first venture into songwriting it's awesome for an 18 year old who had just moved to epic records with his brothers well most of his brothers and really i recommend you guys to give this song a listen if you want early michael jackson check it out it's on youtube and whatnot and whatnot um that is it I hope you enjoyed my thoughts and feelings and analysis of the song Blues Away, Michael's first written song that he ever uh, released onto an album. And don't forget, please subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed this and ring the bell for notifications as I post videos like this, Lollipop Sings and Lollipop Speed Art every Fridays and Saturdays. And don't forget to follow me on my social media accounts linked in the description below, which are Twitter, Instagram, Reddit, and DeviantArt. And I will see you next time. Peace, y'all.